Now we had a decision uh, just yesterday, day before uh, this recording, uh, where a district court uh, overruled the the H one B changes and the wage levels and stuff. So that's some good news. We'll see what happens. Uh, we also have the public charge. Uh, how, I mean, with the with the numbers you have to the extent that you could talk about it, like do these decisions really affect you guys dramatically? Like it's like whole shifts that happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, we put whole programs on hold and stop and start them, and you know the clients get dizzy. So on the public charge, since it was stopping and starting in different states, stopping and starting, um, we, we sat down with our clients and discussed what actually is going to be in their best interest. Um, since it's unpredictable and it's probably going to change again in the future, do they want to risk filing an application without the additional 944 yeah. paperwork and get a, get a kickback and just delay the whole process in the case, or just assume that it's going to come full circle and it's going to be required at some point in time during their adjudication. So many of our clients are, you know, opted for that approach, but uh, yeah, it's very um, confusing to, to clients and just the unpredictability of it is, is, is really tough to manage. Now, other than sending out like a newsletter or a mass email, how much direct communication do they require? All of a sudden, are you on the phone like all day, just number after number explaining this over and over again? Or do you have like a seminar? Yeah, yeah no, we usually do it on an individual client by client basis. Um, occasionally, we'll, we'll put on a, 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 a seminar if there's something, you know, significant or revolutionary in, in the field that's going to last for a long time, that has a longer shelf life. But if we think, you know, something just came down yesterday, it might change next week. It's really no time for a, a, a webinar or a seminar. But it's important um, in our business, ours, yours, mine, and all, all of business uh, immigration lawyers to really um, develop and maintain the professional relationship with your contacts within your employer clientele. So for that reason, more than any other, we'd like to, to really take a personal approach and me or the, the partner who's managing that account um, will we'll schedule a phone call and kind of go through it with whoever the decision makers are on, on that side. And they really appreciate that, that um, personal touch. We don't want to be seen as very transactional um, They'll only hear from us when they initiate an H-1B case or when the labor certification gets approved and we're going to launch the I-140, for example. Mm -hmm. We want to be seen as value-added business partners. Um, so whenever there's something relevant to their program, we like to proactively reach out to them, get them on the phone. If there's no pandemic and if they're local, we'll, we'll, we'll go sit down with them and, and give them the face time that they deserve. So all from a PR, from a marketing uh, perspective, and just a client relation perspective, uh, we take that kind of stuff very seriously. It's so meaningful for clients, just that direct communication. Uh, some people think it's it's not a big deal or something, but that's like, sometimes you can charge whatever you want with fees, as long as you have that one-on-one, -on -one, that's what people want and, and care about. Yeah, and, and it's kind of assumed that um, uh, you're a competent attorney, so they could find a competent attorney elsewhere. Yeah. So it's kind of the, the, the value added things that we provide or we like to provide, you know, in between engagements, in between case initiations that really differentiate us. So we're not the type of firm that if there's some, if we want to get on a phone call with them, we're not going to turn over the hourglass and, and charge them. Yeah. So it, it's all in the name of uh, developing and enhancing um, the relationship with the client. It feels like it's unique to immigration law where we don't nickel and dime people when it comes to these phone calls and stuff. Other areas of law, it seems like they count the seconds. Yeah, <laughs> especially when they bill by the hour or by the in six minute increments. You're right. And sometimes that plays to our advantage and many times it plays to our disadvantage. Yeah. I mean, what, what we've done to ourselves is we've become very um, commoditized. Yeah. So, you know, for those that are laser focused on price and they don't care about, you know, quality and what our approval statistics are, et cetera, they just compare the cost of the widget. You know, yeah. Wexler, what do you charge? Smith, what do you charge? Interesting story, John. I was on, uh, we, we respond to a lot of uh, RFPs, requests for proposals for some larger engagements. And one years ago it came down to what's called a reverse Dutch auction. And it's, it is as terrible as it sounds. So picture this in, in real time. So I'm, I'm on my computer, you know, attorney Smith is on his computer, attorney Jones is on her computer and they just go down the uh, list of case types. Okay. Wax, so why do you charge for H1B? I type it in. Jones types in a smaller number. 
Smith types it a smaller number. So it's like a race to the bottom. So I said, yeah. I- I'm out. <laughs> but I mean, that's the extent to which our, what we did to ourselves in yeah. commoditizing our industry. So it's important to really define scope. So another you know, best practice to young practitioners, just to make sure that clients and potential clients are comparing apples to apples. Yeah. You know, my, my fee may, may be a little higher. It's often less, but it may be a little higher, but you know, it's, it's you're not going to get an extra bill for that phone call for yeah. the you know, to making inquiry to the to the agency. Um, so it's important to define scope to to your clients is a is a good tip. Yeah. Now, how has how has marketing changed since uh, you started? I mean, you, you worked at Furniture and Partners, but um, ha- have you seen a shift in how clients reach out to you? I, I guess big corporations, business to business, probably the same one on one, maybe conferences. But have you seen mm-hmm. a shift in how business development works uh, from the '90s till now? Uh, actually, uh, less, uh, uh, evolution in that regard than, than you might think. Yeah. I mean, it's always been my, my undergrad degree was in marketing. Um, and I always tell people it's kind of my passion. So I always tell people I use that degree more than my law degree every day, just cause I enjoy it so much. I, yeah. I, um, but it's, uh, I, and I do it pretty old school, but now in kind of an, a, a newer school kind of way, I'm not as, uh, 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 social media, uh, uh, an expert as, as you are, but, um, you know, I try to stay active and keep a good presence on, on social media, but there's really nothing like, um, physical networking, which is impossible to do during a pandemic, but me and, and all of, uh, my attorneys in, in the region, we we're, we're all really encouraged, um, to get out there, you know, get out of the office. We know you're, you're really busy and you don't have time, but make time, um, so just, you know, getting involved in different uh, associations and, and, and not even in a disingenuous way, the way I, I sit with most of my attorneys to put together individual business development plans. So when I sit with my younger attorneys, I say, don't do anything that you're not comfortable doing. You know, you, you have to be genuine and, and authentic. So I, I say, what are your hobbies? Do you play golf? Do you, do you fish? Do you play tennis? You know, uh, join a golf club, join a, a tennis club, and then, you know, be known as the immigration lawyer in that group. Yeah. And eventually someone's going to, someone's going to need you. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of proliferates. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're the, the coach of your daughter's soccer team, that's, that's good too. You know, when you're on the sidelines, everyone asks me, what kind of work do you do kind of thing. Um, but it's interesting that um, I encourage my uh, attorneys to get out there and, um, not only uh, mingle with immigration attorneys, which is incredibly valuable, like ALA meetings and local immigration section of bar association meetings, but get out there where immigration lawyers aren't, right? You're not gonna pick up a client at an ALA meeting. Yeah. So, you know, you wanna be, you know, you wanna become the, the go-to immigration resource for, for, your, for your network. So in my office, we have by now, you know, generations of lawyers. We have lawyers in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I just turned 60. So each, each one of, of those age segments, um, I want my attorneys to be the go-to resource. So if you're in your, your 20s, you're just kind of fine-tuning your, your, your craft. You, you, so there's not much of a business development expectation, but you wanna make sure that all your law school friends, all your undergrad friends know that you're an immigration lawyer yeah. and you become the go-to resource for your age bracket. And then, the decision makers are getting younger and younger in these client companies. Very rarely are they my age. They're, they're probably in their thirties and forties now. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to have effective communicators uh, who appears to those people. So we try to, you know, uh, striate the, uh, the, the, the market penetration, so to speak. I hope you enjoyed this short clip from the material of the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. If you want to get more information about becoming a premium member, just email me at info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com or visit the site immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com where you'll see links to a lot of the information that we have for premium members so you can get a better idea of what's there as well as on the YouTube page for the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. We have much more clips and material that's helpful. If you wanted to buy something a la carte, visit ilt.thinkific.com.